I could have got it wrong. You know, he could have just pulled his gun and just shot me there and that's there and then dead. It would have been over and done with. There's nothing I could do. I didn't have a, I didn't have a vest on. I didn't have just had yeah. normal civvy clothes on. So it was just crazy. I was so close to being, and the wow. fact that he waited for us to go, I don't know if that was coincidence or not. But either way, I was pretty close to being a dead man. Welcome to Martial Mindset, where we delve into some of the leading minds in business, martial arts, and academia to find out what truly makes success in any field of life. We are the fight coaches who will motivate and inspire you to level up your game, no matter how big or scary your goals may be. And then I look at the parents, I'm like, okay, what are your rules of engagement? What do I teach your kid? Some parents tell me, I don't want my kid to hit back. Okay, so you want more just defense? Some parents say, I don't really give a shit if somebody touches them, I want them to defend themselves. So I like for my son, I'm like, Noah, you know, if anybody, you know, bullies you, you, you know, you talk to them, you try to defuse it. The instant somebody touches you, you crack them in the face. That's it. <laughs> the instant they grab you, if they're hitting you, you better fight. Yeah. You better, better fight. I tell people, if somebody's bullying you and fighting you, you're taking a beating. You might as well fight. You have nothing to lose. You have nothing to lose. And if you lose... At least you could go home and say, you know what? I took a beating, but fuck, I fought. Even if I took a beating, I gave it everything I have. That's like, that's the mindset. Like win or lose. Same thing people tell me against a knife. You're an idiot. There's nothing you can do. I tell people, okay, so next time somebody pulls out a knife, roll down on the floor and tell them there's nothing I can do. Yeah, exactly. That means right? <laughs> or you fight with everything you have. Win or lose, you fight. And, yeah. and like if I'm, in a, if I'm getting stabbed, I'm either going to get stabbed three times or 15 times. The difference is how fast am I going to react? Am I going to fight and give it everything I have? Yeah, so absolutely. I tell you, you have nothing to lose. No, you're right. I mean, someone said once to me, oh, I don't want to hurt someone. And I said, okay, then just give them your wallet, mobile phone, and your keys to your house. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, you don't want to hurt someone. <laughs> that's absolutely fine. But the point is, is you know, sometimes you don't get the choice, and, and that's really yeah. what I was trying to explain to them that that you don't do that. I mean, I think some people are innately born with that experience of learning how to protect themselves. Look, I'll tell you a story. Once, when I was a young lad, I was about uh, I got into a little bit of trouble, and uh, I, I ended up having this organised fight with this lad. I think I was about fourteen. And this other lad had just come out of Borstal, which is like prison for, for kids in the UK. And the long story short is uh, we had a little bit of a disagreement and uh, we agreed to have a fight in the park. So I turned up at the park to meet this, this, this lad to have a fight with him, who happens to be, you know, not only five years older than me, but also, you know, six foot three and, you know, he's big and he's just come out of Borstal, which I said, which is kids' prison. And I'm thinking, okay, and all my friends are like, yeah, well, don't worry, don't worry. If it kicks off, we're going to back you up. It's all going to be there. So I turned around. Where were they? <laughs> they all run off. <laughs> anyway, the long and the story, short story is, is I got beaten up, you know, and I knew actually that I was going to get beaten up. And, you know, the one thing about that I took away from that is that I didn't back down. I didn't go with, and I could have done that. And I wouldn't have probably lost so much face because, Everybody knew it was insurmountable odds anyway. The, the lad was a lot bigger than me. He had a bad reputation. And, uh, and at the end of the day, everybody who said they were going to stand up for me didn't. So if I turned around and said, no, I don't want to do this anymore, I probably would have got away with it. But I went into it and I actually got beaten up, not too badly. But actually, you know, I had a lot more self-respect for myself. Because, Absolutely. you know, I thought, well, look, you know what, if someone's going to pick on me, and, they, and the guy was looking for trouble. I mean, he was... But he actually started the whole situation. I know it sounds quite childish saying that, but it was actually instigated, not on my side. But I guess what I'm trying to say is that I had the self-respect of knowing that, you know, if, even if it's a difficult situation, I'm not going to, I'm not going to walk away. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's something I've sort of kept with me as I've gone through to adulthood. It takes a lot of guts to do that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, looking back, it's pretty dumb actually. But, yeah. But, <laughs> You know what? I tell people, like, I mean, I've had concussions and I've been like, I mean, I've seen fights like working in the clubs where people got stabbed and shit. And it's, I tell people, it's fucking scary. Like, you're like, are you afraid? I'm fucking right. I'm afraid. What do you think? I'm Superman? No. 
it's yeah. fucking scary when you're in the fucking club and there's a brawl and people are throwing shit and you don't even know where it's coming from, who's throwing what. Yeah. It's like, it's, and, and believe it or not, at that very moment, it's every man for himself. Yeah, absolutely. That's what people don't realize. Like, I mean, when shit hits the fan, you're lucky if somebody jumps in, but very high chances that you're kind of on your own. Oh, you're so I'm like, fuck it, I'm on my own. I don't count on anybody. I got to protect and save my ass and that's it. <laughs> it just reminds me. I remember once I got jumped in a nightclub and there was about uh, three guys, basically. Long and short of it was there was three guys. And I had one pulling on my, on my. I had a tie on. I was dressed quite smartly, so I had a tie on. And this guy's pulling my tie. Another one's throwing punches. And another one's coming from somewhere else. And in the midst of all of that, this guy's throwing glasses, right, and bottles. And there's, like, loads of it just, like, all over the place. Anyway, long and short of it, it's after the Sounds like a video game. It it was crazy. It was literally crazy. Anyway, at the end of the fight, this guy comes up to me, and he just stands next to me casually, just chatting. He said, yeah, he said, I was really impressed. I really liked your fighting. You looked quite good. And then, and, then, and then he said, yeah, but I couldn't quite get you with those bottles that I was throwing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, <laughs> <a> video game. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> well, there's some mad people around. But yeah, I mean, it's just like complete chaos. If, if it was anything chaotic, chaotic. I mean, I did some work on the door. I worked on the door as well when I was a young lad, but it was never too much. It was always a case of... Uh, before we got door licensing now in the UK, but in the early days, it was always a case of, you know, you, you, you worked with a team that, and people that knew you. So uh, I used to do uh, New Year's and Christmas. So, uh, you know, I was young. I used to teach martial arts, of course. And uh, at that time of year, I had no money because all my students decided that, you know, it was Christmas and nobody wanted to pay their fees. So basically... I'd always used to get calls from the local, uh, you know, from guys that I knew working on the door. So they used to say, oh, look, you know, we're short tonight or it's Christmas or New Year's or whatever, or we've got a party or something coming in. Do you want to come in? And obviously I was the smallest out of all of them. I don't know if you know this, Nick, but, you know, you stand out quite a lot. You're a target, basically, but especially when you get groups of lads coming in that, you know, want to come cause a lot of fraction so uh yeah I've, I've been in that environment i know it very very well so uh especially when you've got it going off crazy i mean we've never had anything massively i mean luckily we don't really have sort of firearms going off too much here so we, 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 oh I, I i worked at a club one time and they pulled out the gun and they shot it in the club in the air uh yeah it was, gun it was one of the rap songs that said shoot him up i can't remember what and I was boom, 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 boom. I'm like, what the? F-? You should see people jump, man. Everyone's like, what the fuck? As, you know, all like in the movies, nobody jumped, jumped over a bar and like grabbed the gun and flipped them over and like, no, everybody just fucking. Yeah, 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 run. I've seen that. I've been in a club when that's happened. The song's pulled out a gun and stuff firing. Everybody just runs. It's crazy. It reminds me actually. I did. Uh, I also worked in close protection. I took the singer up to. Uh, I had to t- do a, take a singer up to a club, and it was two of us. And uh, we went to a place called Moss Side. And Moss Side in, uh, in the UK is in Manchester, which is called Gunchester. So it's got quite a high gun crime rate. So uh, I'm, with, I'm doing close protection. So I'm not doing, I'm not doing nightclub security. I'm looking after this singer. And essentially, he went on stage, came out of the stage. Uh, and he was on stage and I was in the back waiting for him to come off. So the club owner comes up to me and he says to me, look, I've got a problem on the door. I said, what do you mean you've got a problem on the door? What, where's your staff? He said... They've run away. <laughs> what do you mean? They've run away. It's an That's amazing. hilarious. Right? Listen to it. It's worse, right? So he, he says to me, look, I really need to help. Can you help me? And I, I just thought, well, okay, all right, fine. So I left. There was two of us in this team. So I left my, my colleague with, with the singer, basically, who was performing. And I went to the front, front of the house. And I went, got to the front of the house. And it happens to be a local... I don't know what you want to call him, basically. I mean, this is a podcast that's so going out on the internet, so I've been careful with my words, but he was basically one of, you know, one of the local bad boys, basically. So he's standing there, and bearing in mind all the security have run off, and they've run off because he's turned up, and he's come up with this, right, well, you're going to let me in for nothing, basically, and uh, do you know who I am sort of conversation. You know those conversations that these... Uh, fuck, right? do and you know sometimes who- you don't know if it's bullshit or if there's somebody... Right. That's the fucking scary shit. So I'm, I'm sitting there, and the only thing I'm going to tell you that saved my life, Nick, was I had a mag light in my back pocket, on my back. So I sat down in front of him, 
and uh, you know he's, he's squared up to me and I've sat down on the table quite casually with my hand tucked in my back like this holding the mag light because I'm thinking you know he's going to do something and then when he does something I'm just going to basically use the mag light I've got no choice basically so uh, you know he didn't say much he, you know he argued with me for a bit and I was quite calm about it and I said look I'm really sorry you know you can't come in unless you pay so anyway he went away uh, and I went back to the stage and I said to the club owner, yeah, it's cool. Okay. Everything's fine. So I went back to the club owner. So I went back to the stage and we took our VIP and we left basically. And just after we left, he came back with a handgun. Basically he came back with a handgun and he robbed the place. He took the owner, took him into back office, cleared the office out basically. So, I mean, I reckon I was probably about that close to being shot, but the only reason why he didn't do it is because he probably suspected that. Well, he knew by my posture and what I was doing. So, I mean, it was, it was a hairy situation. That I- uh, I've been in those. Those shit are scary. It's like you're playing chicken. Who's going to move first? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you're like, do I hit? Don't I hit? Do I trap? Don't I trap? And it's like you're, you're a hair away of an explosion. It's crazy. And it could go any way. No matter how good you are, you don't know what the fuck's going to happen. That's the reality of it. That is the reality. And you're one step away from being dead. Because you know what? If I didn't, probably the way I look back at it now in these days, and I think maybe if I didn't posture the way I postured, and I was confident I was going to get that out, that meg light on the top of his head before he could do anything. But the point is, I could have got it wrong. You know, he could have just pulled his gun and just shot me there and that's there and then, dead. It would have been over and done with. There's nothing I could do. I didn't have a... I didn't have a vest on. I didn't have just had normal civvy clothes on. So it was just crazy. I was so close to being. And the fact that he waited for us to go, I don't know if that was coincidence or not, but either way, I was pretty close to being a dead man. So, I mean, it's luck sometimes.